All right. The diagram shows the covalent bonds in an organic compound. Organic compound, ethane. The total number of electrons in one molecule of this compound is the total number of molecule, sorry, electrons are going to be equal to the proton number, right? So carbon, you got carbon, which has six protons, and you have hydrogen, which has one proton. You have two carbons, and you have one, two, three, four, five, six, six hydrogens. So that equals to, that equals to 12 for the carbons, and yeah, six for the hydrogens, shame. A total of 18 electrons. We were counting protons, but the proton number would be the same as electron number. The total number of electrons in the bond in the molecule of this compound. Previously, I did this question, I did it a little fast. Even though I knew about this bond, I just skipped the count. So if I were to count, it's one, two, six. Okay, making mistakes again. Four, five, uh, six, seven. The seven bonds over here. So seven bonds implies each bond has two electrons. So multiplying by two, I'll get 14 electronics, electrons, right? So the correct answer is 18 for X and 14 for Y. The correct answer is D. Okay, I'm gonna just fix that. It is indeed D. Which contains the greatest mass of oxygen? Essentially, we have to find out greatest moles of oxygen and we can figure it out. So you have, let's figure out, you have 0 0.2 moles of, you have 0 0.2 moles of aluminum nitrate, you have 0 0.3 moles of Potassium sulfate, 0 0.4 of whatever, and 0 0.5 of whatever. Now, if you have, let's say, one molecule, molecule of aluminum nitrate, that'll actually have nine atoms of oxygen. Of ox O, right? Because there are three for every nitrate and in one molecule, I know it's an ionic compound, so we don't really count molecules, right? But it's easy to see them as molecules. There are actually three nitrates, so NO3, NO3, no, no, no. That's nine oxygens, right? So, Get to multiply it by nine to find out the moles of atoms over here, right? Zero point three moles of potassium sulfate, four oxygens. I gotta multiply that by four. Three for this guy because there's just three, and three for this guy. So zero point two times nine. It's gonna be one point eight. It's gonna be one point two. It's going to be 1.2 and it's going to be wow, 1.5. I thought, oh, 1.8 does win, right? I was thinking that was winning. Yep, A is the answer. Which sample contains the most atoms? So a water molecule is, this is the best way to do it. I like making tables so you can compare them easily. So you have H2O, you have CO2, you have CH4, that's probably gonna win. You have HCl, right? So that's three, that's three, that's five, and that's two, right? And gotta multiply it by the moles. Same as last question. So you're getting 1.5, Three, five, and four. The correct answer is C that has the largest moles. You have five moles of atoms in 
methane. Copper sulfate uh, is electrolyzed using electrodes. The current is constant, so the flow of electrons is constant, so the anions produced or lost is going to be constant. Right? Metal lost or metal produced, I should say. Which graph, or like as a result, which graph is obtained when the mass of the anode is plotted against time? The anode. The anode has a surplus of electrons, oh, as a loss of electrons. So what happens is copper in the anode will turn into copper ion. So it'll dissolve. So the anode will lose mass. So it's either A, because that's losing mass, and C is losing mass. But it's going to be consistent. It's not a rate equation. It's going to consistently lose mass because the electrons are dictating how it works and your current supply is constant. The C is the right answer. An ester is produced where the name is something alcohol. So it's something alcohol and then something acid. So alcohol, let's put that in a bracket, an acid in a bracket. So it's alcohol with the oil in it and noate with the acid name in it. So it's producing ethanoic acid with propanol. So it's going to produce propyl uh, ethanoic acid, right? Ethanoate, ether know it right so gotta look for propyl ethanoate i see it i see it i see it i see it right now we got to make sure if these two these are this is actually propyl ethanoate so i'm going to cut it at the carbon so the ester link formed is actually between the carbon with the double bond and the o this is the link formed so i identify that place And I cut it there, right? Cut it there. So whatever is on the carbon side of the cut, let's do that here. Whatever is on the carbon side of the cut is the acid. The alcohol side is the oxygen side, or the oxygen side is the allo, alcohol, right? So it has to be two. That's ethanoic acid, that's uh, coming from ethano, ethanoic acid, that's eth, and that's a propanol. I see it, I see it, propanol. Correct answer is C. The equation shows the production of iron by reduction of iron. Okay, so you reduce iron, produces iron, right? 80 tons of iron oxide is produced, produces 50 tons. Right, let's, let's take a look at grams. Whenever I see a ton question, I convert it into grams. And I just remember I did convert it into grams, right? Okay, 80 tons produces, so the molar ratio between iron, oops, iron oxide, I'll just focus on iron oxide and iron is actually one to two right so what are their mrs that's actually 160 and iron i think is 56 let's double check iron is 56 yeah okay and gotta divide this by mass given to me um, actually I don't need to do anything over here actually let's wait for it nothing over here so I'll just erase it what, what am I doing right 80 over 160 so that's 0 0.5 moles 0 0.5 moles right and 0 0.5 moles would have produced, let's do that math here, 0 0.5 moles, should have produced twice that amount, one mole. 
So one mole is actually 56 grams of iron. Yes? So let's do this ratio again. Fe2 O3 to iron if you began with 80 grams it should have given you 56 grams that was what you expected but whatever happened you ended up actually getting 50 grams so what is the percentage of that so you got 50 but you were expecting 56 times 100 that's the percentage yield so if you got, and that makes sense because if you got a hundred percent yield, that means all of it, whatever you were expecting, you were expecting all that amount to be delivered from this process and it got delivered. So 56 would make this a hundred percent, right? That makes sense. A lot of people are confused with the word yield, I think. So I'm getting 89.3, I guess. So I'm going to go with D. D is my answer.